Hi, I'm Phil and welcome to Holy Habitus and today I'd like to talk to you about the word neuroplasticity which is a very long word but please don't be frightened by it. It basically means that your brain is plastic or changeable. Now this is a discovery of recent science. They used to think the brain was static and set in stone. Now they know that it's actually changing and adapting and rewiring itself all the time in response to what you do with your body. Now the famous example of this is um, they did some tests on London cab drivers. They scanned their brains and found that the part of their brain that dealt with navigation and finding your way around and spatial awareness, that part of the brain was bigger in them than it was for your average person on the street. Why? Because what they were doing was going around the streets of London all the time, habitually, trying to find their way around, remember the shortest routes. And that meant that their brain had rewired itself accordingly. Isn't that fascinating? But that basically has implications for discipleship. We often think that we have to think rightly in order to do rightly. But this is telling us that what we do affects what we think. If we do rightly, we'll start to think rightly. If you read Romans chapter 12 verses 1 to 2, you'll see that Paul is telling the Roman Christians to present their bodies as living sacrifices to God, holy and pleasing to him. And he says that's your spiritual act of worship. Worship is not just singing songs on a Sunday, it's giving your physical lives over to God, your habitus if you will. And when you do that, um, you'll stop conforming to the pattern of this world and be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Your thinking will start to change, your brains will be rewired and you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. Now that's quite an exciting outcome because basically it means as you start trying to give your physical lives obediently to God, making your habitus holy, then you'll start to think God's thoughts after him. You'll start to think like God. You'll start to perceive the world as God perceives it. In the West, we've often got this balance wrong. We've loaded ourselves with loads of knowledge and not been very good at putting it into practice. We might hear a hundred sermons in a year, but only take one action or significant action for Jesus. Um, and that breaks the cycle and sometimes our knowledge immobilizes, stops us from being able to do what we need to do and we break down and fall in a little heap. So my challenge to you is to say, well, what is your next step, your one next step and do it? Don't try to work out your next hundred steps or a thousand steps you could take next because you're just going to trip up and fall over. You're never going to learn anything, really, in terms of discipleship. What's your next step? Hear from God, do it. Because when you do it, you'll hear from God better about what your next step is, and then you can do that. It's all about simplicity and obedience, which are the basic ingredients of discipleship. What is your next step today? Go and do it.